Hi, I'm Hank Thiele, the superintendent for Community High School District 99. Thank you for tuning into our series on the master facility plan. What we're going to talk about in this short video is the learning commons and what that concept is and what it would mean for our students here in District 99. The idea of a learning commons is a spot where we can pull students and staff together and resources together in a very accessible area so that students have a hub that they can go to to access everything that they might need throughout the day. For example, one of our current challenges centers around study halls where students are there to get some work done, but they're also there to access a teacher or other students to get work done, to learn on their own throughout the day. And we warehouse students in some of the least aesthetically pleasing areas in our, our, in our buildings during study halls because we just need big rooms to get everybody into. And when you look at these spaces, this is not really conducive to students having an engaging experience here at school. They're dark, they're dimly lit, and they're also isolated. We put 40 to 60 students in there with a few teachers, but that might not be the teacher they need. So I'd like to see us create some spaces where we get more students and more teachers together in more flexible space. We're also challenged before and after school, students arrive or as they're waiting for athletics or activities to begin after school or to be picked up, we don't have a spot where students can go and work. This is what our hallways look like before school. This uh, is not ideal for students to sit and work together and get things done, they're on the floor. This makes travel between the halls in the morning challenging, especially if you're in a wheelchair or on crutches. And also these floors in the winter get wet. This is not where we want our kids sitting and getting work done. We want them to be in a spot where they could actually uh, sit there with a device, plug in, have a table, and get some work done. The other challenges of all these kids in hallways before and after school is it's difficult to supervise. You're constantly circulating through the halls, seeing what kids are doing and, and trying to keep an eye on them. So one of our other major challenges is that during the day, when students are in the study halls or in lunches or at a variety of points of the day, although as you can see illustrated by these red dots, the core services that a student might need, counseling, social work, psychologist, nurse, activities, athletics, administration, bookstore, cafeteria, all of those things that a student might need to go through, go to throughout the day. Although they're all centrally located in the middle of the building, they're all separated by hallways. You can see from this aerial view of north, like here they all are. They're all right here. They're all separated by this courtyard, this unusable space, and that forces hallways to get around the building. What we're looking at, you're seeing it at North, we're going to talk about the same project at South in a second, is this opportunity to recapture this unused courtyard space. And what we would do is then close the, enclose that and take over all of this space so that now you don't have these hallways separating you from the resources. Students can come back to these idea of learning commons. A learning commons, <clears throat> can serve as this main street in the center of the school. During study halls, during lunch, before school, after school, students can come to this space and they can access resources on demand. We're dealing with the Netflix generation. We're used to students getting whatever they need when they need it, and they should. We as adults, we get access to resources as we need it. We advocate for ourselves, if we need something, we go get it. We want to teach our students those same skills, and the physical layout of our building prevents us from working that way. So we would provide this more flexible learning space in the, the middle core of the building. Then they can get to all those resources. You're looking at south now, same kind of layout. We have a giant courtyard in the middle, all the resources around it, all separated by hallways. Here's that same aerial view. Once again, courtyard in the middle, all the resources hanging out around it. If we take that unused space, students are rarely in this space 
throughout the day or the year. We recapture a good portion of that at south as well. Now you end up with the same idea of this learning commons, this space where here's our cafeteria, here's this flexible learning commons where we pull all of our kids back from study halls, Kids are here before school, after school, and they can make it from activities, athletics, to the auditorium, cafeteria, administration, bookstore, our counselors, our support staff, up into our library, our technology support. All of that hangs off of that learning commons. When students are there, they can get to those resources. The other thing that happens is all of our teachers that are in study halls come back into this space as well. So if I'm in a study hall right now, and my teacher is an English teacher, but I need math help, it's challenging to get that from my English teacher. But if we pull back the teacher that's in one study hall that's a math teacher, and the other one that's an English teacher, we pull them both into this space, now every teacher that's, or every student that's in the Commons has access to both of those teachers when they need them. So we can staff that space very differently as well. I want to show you some examples of learning commons at nearby schools. We're not at the front edge of this. This is something that's going on in schools across the nation and especially in this area. You know, we live in the Chicagoland area, natural light, uh, also getting into the outside during certain times of the year with the weather we have is a challenging. So what these learning commons do is they create large areas with windows and glass and allow the light into the space. So even during the times of the year where you can't get outside because of the weather conditions, you still get a part of your day where you get to be in the outside even though you're in the inside. So here's Addison Trail, very similar to what we're looking at doing at, at South High where they had a large courtyard and they took over a portion of it. They have these large windows to allow light in. Willow Brook works very similarly, large courtyard. They close off part of the courtyard and get a learning commons. Naperville Central is closer to the idea of North High where they had this internal box that they took over and opened up and created a large learning space in the middle of the building. Same thing at York High, you'll see in this image, this is similar to what North's experience would be where you have the old facade of the building and you build around it and you get this large space inside. This is great space for our students to use during the day, as I've talked about, but it's also a great spot for the community to use at night. And uh, we don't have spaces to host all kinds of different events that we would like to host for our, our students and our community. A lot of times it's held in gym spaces, which aren't as ideal as a large, open, flexible space like what you see here. What I want to get into now is what some of our spaces could actually look like. We're going to look at some artists' renderings. This isn't exactly what these spaces will look like. These are just kind of ideas of how we could change and move space here to work and create learning commons. So here's at North High. This is that courtyard I was talking about earlier. And this is an artist's rendering of what this could look like. So you see the uh, adding a whole bunch of glass near the top, allowing light to come in. We get some greenery inside of that space. Right now, where I'm standing is where student services and administration is, and I'm looking back at that courtyard. And as I look back at that courtyard, the cafeteria is in the background, and you'll see we just have all of these different types of furniture and space that we can move around and use however we need to based on the situation. I'm gonna take a look from the other direction. Let's go stand in the cafeteria and look out. If I'm in the new North High cafeteria looking out, I can see the commons here in the background. And this is where students could flow into the commons and flow between these two levels of the cafeteria. As I said earlier, many of the parts of the project overlap. So this is where accessibility overlaps with the commons. Let's go over to the south. Uh, campus. We're going to start in the back part of the courtyard. This is the front of the building. This is the back of the building. We're going to go right in here in the back corner of the courtyard. We're going to take a look back towards what is the auditorium now. And here's an example, same kind of space. You'll see we take over uh, what is right now grass, 
bring the outside inside and close it. And now we get a whole bunch of flexible space with different types of seating, uh, different levels. We get volume, we get outside light, and it becomes a much nicer space to work in than what we have now and a different kind of space that we can leverage in different ways. We're gonna to walk to where those steps were. We're gonna turn and look back the other way, back into the Learning Commons. You'll see, remember, north is a box, so that's pretty easy to picture. South is taking over a portion of the courtyard, and it's kind of this sweeping space. I'm gonna to try to walk you through that. We turn and we start walking back towards the main entrance. You can see the auditorium is off on the side here, but this gives you the idea of those same kind of glass walls we saw at some of those other schools, allowing the light to come in. You still get some of that outdoor space, but now we take over large volume, both uh, uh, vertically and horizontally in this space. You'll see the flexible furniture and the, the students working in a variety of different settings. Uh, small groups, large groups, with teachers, and with, with peers. We're going to continue walking back towards the front of the building, and you'll see now we come out of that learning commons and into what's currently the hallway. So we take over part of those hallways because we don't need these as just passing uh, hallways anymore. We can actually change these into more flexible environments that we don't have the opportunity to, to do now. So this gives you an idea of in some of the spaces both at North and South High where we take over hallway space and use it differently as well as part of the Commons project. So to learn more about the entire Master Facilities Plan or the Commons, uh, go to our website. We also have a video there that is from our staff's point of view, our teachers that are leading instruction, what the Commons would mean for our students. So I encourage you to tune into that short video as well. Go to csd99.org slash MFP and also respond about this part of the project and the entire project in the survey that'll go home in the next few weeks. Thanks for tuning in.